Hello everyone. My name is Ana Lucila Moreira. I'm from Brazil. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Nens Van Alphen for the amazing Congress she organized, even in such difficult times. It's an honor to collaborate with ISPNI board and also to participate in ICCNMI 2021. And my test today will be to talk about radio nerve. So I'll describe the anatomical landmarks to scan radio nerve in its entire course and demonstrate how to scan this, this nerve, including posterior interosseous nerve and superficial radio nerve. Radial nerve is the largest branch of the brachial plexus, and the landmarks are important to guide you to recognize where you can find the nerve. Uh, it's important to remember that after this period of learning, you will be frequently asked to examine the nerves in the setting of trauma, for example, and the normal anatomy will be distorted, so it's important to recognize landmarks to guide you. In the arm, the nerve descends as a continuation of posterior cord, of the brachial plexus, behind the first part of axillary artery and the upper part of brachial artery, when it passes between the medial head of triceps and the humerus and winds around from the medial to lateral side of the humerus in a groove along with the deep brachial artery beneath the long and lateral heads of triceps muscle. Let's see in detail. Uh, here in the armpit, you can see axillary artery here, and the veins are not visible because they are easily compressed. And I prefer to do the image with a little compression and without the veins because of the posterior enhancement. And you can see here the lateral cord, the medial cord, and the posterior cord. And this is a very good image. And you can also see muscles here. Uh, there are landmarks as well. So coracobrachialis muscle, biceps brachii, and it, this is the lateral side, and in the medial side, latissimus dorsi and teres major muscle. Going down, uh, the nerve descends close to the medial head of triceps here and the humerus, and behind the long head of triceps muscle. And it winds around the humerus from medial to the lateral side along with the deep brachial artery, which is here, and beneath the long head of tricep in the medial side and the lateral head of tricep in the lateral side. So let's see a movie showing this proximal trajectory of the radial nerve. Here is the nerve descending from the armpit, and this is medial head of triceps, long head of triceps, and it winds around the humerus from medial to lateral side, along with the deep brachial artery. And here is lateral head of triceps, and it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum and goes beneath uh, the brachial radialis muscle, between its muscle and brachialis muscle. It's always helpful to remind you that you can localize the artery using color Doppler, because sometimes it's not that clear and you will need this landmark to guide you. And during its trajectory in the arm, it gives muscular branches to triceps, unconius, brachial radialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brachialis, and cutaneous branches as well, posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm and inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. And in the distal part, it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum and passes between the brachialis and brachioradialis to the front of the lateral epicondyle, where it divides in superficial and deep branches. So let's see it. Here you can see the exact moment uh, when it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum, which is here, I'm pointing and between the triceps lateral head and the brachial radialis muscle. And from now on, the deep brachial artery separates uh, from the nerve and it do does not accompany the nerve anymore. So after it pierces and divides in superficial and deep branches, uh, we'll follow the deep branch, so the posterior interosseous nerve, 
and it winds to the back of the forearm around the lateral sides of the radius between the two planes of fibers of supinator muscle and descends between the superficial and deep extensor muscles in the forearm and finally descends on the interosseous membrane as the dorsal interosseous nerve. So here you can see the nerve piercing the lateral uh, intermuscular septum and passing between brachial radialis here and brachialis here, which is deeper. And you will see in this uh, trajectory in the antecubital fossa uh, that it divides into two branches, the deep branch here and the superficial branch here. And we'll follow the deep branch first and then we'll follow the superficial branch. So here is the deep branch and here is the superficial branch. So after piercing the lateral intermuscular septum, the nerve uh, is situated between brachioradialis and brachialis. Here is the nerve, here is the humerus. And the division in deep branch and superficial branch here. And here is the deep branch and the elbow joint. So you can see the distal surface of the lateral epicondyle and the deep branch. And here, brachial radialis and brachialis, radial nerve. And you will see superficial branch and deep branch here. And we'll follow the deep branch and it goes to the lateral side of radius here and winds around to the back of the forearm between the two layers of the supinator muscle. So it's passing in the first part of the supinator muscle, the proximal part, and between superficial and deep layers here, as these three black dots here. And it leaves the supinator muscle to the interosseous membrane, and it descends between the superficial and deep forearm extensors and along with the dorsal interosseous artery. So here is the deep branch between the two planes of fibers of supinator muscle in the proximal part, here. And the landmarks are extensor carpi radialis longus and brachial radialis. And going to the distal part, you have posterior interosseous nerve between the layers of supinator and extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus as well. And this is a, a longitudinal image of the posterior interosseous nerve in its trajectory entering between the two layers of supinator muscle. And it's, a, it's an important image to show the surgeon when you have a compression or a lesion in this site. And then uh, the deep branch leaves the supinator muscle and descends between the superficial and uh, deep extensor muscles in the forearm, descending on the interosseous membrane here as the dorsal interosseous nerve along with the dorsal interosseous artery. And now we'll talk about the superficial branch. Uh, it passes along the front of the radial side of the forearm, underneath the brachial radialis muscle, and is slightly lateral to the radial artery. And it separates from the artery about seven centimeters above the wrist and passes beneath the tendon of brachial radialis and pierces the deep fascia where it divides into two branches to supply the most part of the dorsum of the hand and fingers. So now we'll follow the superficial branch. Here is the deep branch and here is the superficial branch. And the superficial branch descends along uh, the anterior forearm. It's here and underneath the brachial radialis muscle and near the radial artery. But in the distal part, it separates from the artery and it becomes more superficial. Um, 
just uh, beneath the skin and close to the radius. And this image again is here just to remember that when you need landmarks to recognize the nerve, use color Doppler to localize the radial artery here. And the nerve will be in its lateral side beneath the brachial radialis muscle and from proximal to distal and anterior forearm. Uh, this is superficial radial nerve and on the lateral side you can see brachial radialis muscle and extensor carpi radialis longus. And on the medial side you see radial artery, flexor carpi radialis and pronator teres and this is radius. And in the distal part of the forearm, you will have also flexor pollicis longus. So the nerve will be between brachial radialis muscle and flexor pollicis longus. And then uh, superficial radial nerve becomes more superficial and close to the radius surface and just beneath the skin. And it separates from the radial artery. And here you can see superficial radial nerve in its distal trajectory beneath the brachial radialis muscle and then the tendon, passing beneath the tendon, and go into the dorsal aspect of the wrist where it first divides in lateral and medial branches and then it divides in smaller cutaneous branches. And you can see how easy it is to follow uh, these smaller cutaneous branches with this kind of transducer, with high frequency transducer. And in my last slides, I'll show you some abnormal nerves. The first case is a trauma patient with a proximal radius fracture. And this is the first picture of a sequence of posterior interosseous nerve. And that has a normal size in this image, but you can notice that uh, supinator muscle is hyperechogenic and because of that uh, the radius surface is not clear as it uses to be and this is the posterior interosseous nerve. The second image uh, shows uh, an enlargement of the nerve with 10 millimeter square and the third image uh, shows this big neuroma with 29 millimeter square and you can notice the supinator muscle is uh, heterogeneous and the pattern is clearly neurogenic. This is the longitudinal image of the neuroma, the most wanted image uh, by the surgeons because they, they understand that. And you should always give measurements in these cases and provide uh, anatomical surface landmarks to localize the neuroma. This is another case that involved a minor trauma with no fracture, uh, but with development of motor deficit in the posterior interosseous nerve territory confirmed by electroneuromyography. Uh, ultrasound showed a normal radial nerve in the arm and even uh, in the division in deep and superficial branches. But in the longitudinal image, you can see that posterior interosseous nerve is enlarged proximal uh, to the entry site between the two uh, supinator uh, layers here. And using a higher frequency transducer, you can see the detail of this uh, enlargement. Remember that ultrasound allows you to compare sites, so you can see the difference between the normal side here and the enlarged side here. And in my routine, this kind of image proved it to be very useful to the report to stand your ground on the diagnosis you, you have made. But be careful when you see enlargement of posterior interosseous nerve without signs of compression. On the left, you can clearly see the compression site here and the enlargement proximal and distal to the lesion. And on the right, you see the posterior interosseous nerve homogeneously enlarged uh, without signs of compression. So remember that this enlargement could be secondary to valerian degeneration caused by a proximal lesion and follow the nerve in its entire length and do transversal and longitudinal images. 
And remember that humeral fractures also can be a cause of distal stretching uh, with lesion of posterior interosseous nerve. This is my last slide and I wish you all have a great time and enjoy this beautiful meeting. Thank you.